Hey guys, it's Connor, and today we're going to talk about a little tip that just might save you when dealing with overexposed skin tones. The very first thing that you learn when you pick up a camera is how to expose your image properly, how to make sure that your subject looks good and that you're not losing any detail in your highlights or in your shadows, but we're all human and sometimes we make mistakes. So I'm going to show you a little bit of a trick to try and minimize those mistakes as much as possible. Now ideally you'd shoot in some sort of log or even a raw format if you're really lucky, because that will allow you to get all that detail back and fix that overexposure without issue. But not all of us have access to those tools. So the trick I'm going to show you today works no matter how you're going to shoot. The example we're going to use today is footage I shot of myself. And you can see here on my forehead, on my nose and just under my eye here, we have these areas that are starting to look overexposed because they're losing color and they're losing detail. Now normally if I had shot in a log profile or a raw format, as I mentioned earlier, these are easy things to fix. We can just drop the exposure or drop the highlight slider and we can get that stuff back. But there's two problems. The first is that most of us don't shoot in those formats, so we need another solution. And the second is that things like exposure and highlight control are going to impact your entire image. The technique that we're going to use today lets us isolate just the areas that we want to affect without affecting the rest of our image. First thing we're going to do is go over to our effects tab and we're going to grab our Lumetri color tool. We're going to drag that onto our footage and most of the stuff we're going to ignore, we're just going to use the HSL secondary tab. The HSL secondary tool allows us to select different parts of our image just based on their color, their saturation, and their luminance or their brightness. To give you an example, let's say I wanted to select just the green in the neon sign in the back here. I would tell HSL secondary to select only green objects with this brightness and this amount of saturation. The reason this is so helpful is that if I wanted to mask that out manually, I would have to grab the pen tool, draw around all the green areas, and then if that object was moving, I would have to animate that mask by hand and go frame by frame and track it perfectly. So it's really time consuming and not necessarily the most accurate. HSL Secondary lets us animate these masks automatically and get a more precise selection. We're gonna start by going over to our key. We're gonna click on the eyedropper tool to set the color, and we're just gonna click on the overexposed area. So you can see our sliders over here have changed, but nothing in our image looks any different. And that's because all we've done is just made a selection. We haven't modified anything yet, so our image is gonna look exactly the same. To see what we've selected, you can click Show Mask. You can see that the selection that's been made isn't very accurate, so now we can tweak the mask to make sure it's grabbing just what we want. We can take our selections and we can drag them around, we can widen the area that they're affecting, or we can even smooth their selection by grabbing the different tabs. So I'm gonna go ahead and just drag it up because I wanna get just the brightest areas of the image. And then I'm going to take the saturation selection and boost that up a little bit as well. So that looks about good to me. We're getting just the brightest areas and nothing that we don't want to grab. Once you're happy with your selection, you can turn off the show mask and you can scroll down to this tool set right here. Now there's a lot of stuff that we can do, but we're just going to be dealing with temperature and tint. We're going to use these controls to add color to these overexposed areas. And the colors that we're going to be adding are going to be matching the skin tones surrounding these overexposed areas. That way they blend in and don't look like these bright white hot spots anymore. Temperature, if you don't already know, if you drag it to the left, it adds blue. If you drag it to the right, it adds yellow. With tint, if you drag it to the left, it adds green. And if you drag it to the right, it adds pink or magenta. So in order to create that skin tone color, we're gonna be adding yellow and magenta until we get a nice balance that matches the surrounding skin tones. I'm gonna to start by adding some yellow in, and we're gonna drag it up until it looks the most natural and most blended in. Like you can see if we go over 100, it already looks way too yellow. But somewhere around 60 seems subtle enough to me. So while we are trying to find the most natural setting possible on this slider, you need to keep in mind that right now it's just yellow because skin tones aren't yellow. So we are gonna fix this by adding in pink later, but for now just go for the most natural blended in look that you can with just that one slider. So now we can hop down and add some pink into the image to balance it out. And somewhere around 30 looks good to me. So let's turn this effect off just so we can see the before and after. And if you look at them side by side, you can already see a big improvement in the skin tones. Those bright blown out areas are much more smooth and they look a lot more natural. Now keep in mind, we haven't actually gotten any detail back in these areas. All we've done is add color. 
but it's enough to make it look convincing and look like these skin tones are properly exposed. To smooth things out a little bit more and just make sure everything's natural, especially when watching on a big screen or zoomed in, we're just gonna go up here and add a little bit of blur. Just a few pixels is enough to just smooth out that selection. The other thing you can do is go to this slider here that controls brightness. I like to bring it up a little bit just to compensate for the changes that we've made. And I know we're trying to bring down exposure and you're probably wondering why I'm bringing it back up again. This is still a big difference from where we were at before, but I don't want to overdo it to the point where the skin tones look plasticky and fake. And I find that if you leave that slider where it is, or even bring the exposure down, you can really see that it kind of dulls the skin tone and it just doesn't look real and realistic. So by bringing it up, we kind of find a good middle ground that's just a little bit more natural and convincing. If for any reason you're having a really tough time dialing in the skin tones and you just need a more precise way to do it, there is a tool that will let you do that. This tool is called a color picker and what it does is it lets me hover my mouse over any section of the screen and it will tell me in those same values of hue, luminance, and saturation the color that I'm hovering over. So for example, if we hover over this area in the middle of my face, which is not the overexposed areas, you can see that our hue is somewhere around 13 or so on an average. And if we move that to the overexposed area that we've corrected, we're at about 14, 15. So that's a pretty close color. Now, if we turn that off, all the adjustments that we've made, and we hover again, now you can see we're much closer to 20, 22, up in that range. So the color's much more different. So we can use these values to get an idea of what we're aiming for and adjust our temperature and tint sliders accordingly until we get that right hue value. Keep in mind that all we wanna match is the hue. The saturation and the luminance are gonna change depending on the different lighting conditions. And the lighting in the middle of my face or on the far side of my face is gonna be different than the side that the light is on. This color picker is just for PC, but I'm gonna leave a link for both a Mac and a PC version, both of which I personally use and love. You should always shoot in a way that is about preventing mistakes and preventing issues in the first place, but sometimes we just make mistakes, they're inevitable, and it's important that you know how to minimize the effects of those mistakes because they will happen. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment, I'm more than happy to answer it for you, and if you feel like this video helped you out, I'd really appreciate you helping me back by liking, subscribing, all the stuff that you already know how to do, and until then, I'll see you in the next video.